Hello YouTube. We are in engine room of big tanker ship. In this video I want to show you how to use Chris Marine valve seat recondition machine for auxiliary engines. Here you can see three engines which are turning 900 kW generators each. Engines are made in Japan by Yanmar. They are 8 cylinder, 4 stroke, turbocharged and are using heavy fuel oil which basically is heated up asphalt. Cylinder head is already removed and ready for inspection. I already removed valve cutter and now taking off springs and rotor caps. This cylinder head I overhauled one year ago by using Chris Marine equipment. Now I will show you condition of valves and seats after 5000 running hours. I am taking out suction valve. Here is light carbon layer on the valve stem, which is normal. There is no valve leak signs. And this is suction valve seat, which is in very good condition, no any evidence of leaking. I am taking out second suction valve. And two exhaust valves, which usually are in worse condition. Cylinder head is upside down and I already reconditioned both suction valve seats of the camera. They are looking as brand new. I will try to explain how to do exhaust seats now. First, you have to use supplied cleaning tool, which removes carbon deposits from valve guide edge creating conical surface. This ensures that the pilot spindle will perfectly center it, even if the guide is slightly oval. I am applying slight downward pressure by hand and turning cleaning tool clockwise. Now when edge is clean, we can insert pilot spindle. This is pilot spindle, which have stabilization support with three pistons. This is lower pilot spindle tightening cone. Install it from bottom and tighten by hand. By loosening locking screws, pistons are moving outwards and are in contact with the wall. Lock position with screws. System are self-centering and there is no need for further adjustments. This is worn out valve guide. I am checking them when they are in place by this self-made calibration tool. Nominal ID limits for new guide is from 14 mm dead plus 24 microns. Maximum usable ID is 14.28 millimeters. 
To be on safe side, my tool is 14.15mm OD, so the guide will not reach limit until next engine overhaul, which will be after 5000 running hours. I think after so much boring information you need to relax, so I will show you some birds. This is most expensive, this is heart of the machine. I am screwing machine into pilot spindle. By using two spanners and one hand, I'm tightening them together. Machine has tool holder bracket with tiny turning bit in it. Slide is moving between guides from factory preset angle. After machining, seat will be 119.7 degrees. By two screws, tool holder attached to slide of angle guide. Machine is run by frequency controller. It has start and stop buttons, emergency stop switch and speed control. I'm turning speed control to zero and pressing start. Display shows zero hertz and machine is not turning. I am now increasing speed to 4 Hz and observing if everything is fine. I am turning feeding wheel by one division, which is 500 of millimeter. Checking if clutch is tight and pressing start. Speed is set to 60 Hz, which corresponds to 250 rpm. Machine is now feeding outwards automatically, while the preset cutting depth is machined away from the seat face. More machining is required. I am releasing clutch. Returning cutter to beginning position. Tightening clutch. Feeding in. And pressing start. Chips are very fine. And we are done. Quality is amazing. Total time for machining all four seats was about two hours, when old school hand lapping takes two days.
thank you for watching and I hope this video will help young and maybe not so young third engineers in their future auxiliary engine overhauls.